Oh, who is he? Oh, Ooh. that's that Oh, there. my wow. God. <laughs> the way she snapped that out. What did you call those things? The sleigh. The sleigh. You had a day, huh? For Pam. It was like a, like, like, a, like, a, like a fan on the dance floor. <laughs> All right, hi everybody. We're on. We're on with. Uh, and here's Modi. And we. Wow, what a guest! Oh my god, <laughs> what a guest! Uh, my, help me say the last name correctly. Mike Solom Solomonov. 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 Yeah. Oh wow. In so, Israel, you say Solomonov. Solomonov. Here they say Solomonov. Solomonov. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. Does that come with Solomonov? Yeah. Dude, is it Solomonov? I got oh, a little, little Solomonov, Solomonov behind my behind my ear. Yeah. Um, and those of you who don't know who he is, he is the guy you need to know to get a reservation <laughs> at Laser Wolf. That is a restaurant in in the Huxton Hotel in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, where you literally are transformed to Eretz Israel to to Israel. Have you been there? I haven't, but I would like to add that he's also the person that you apparently need to know to go to Zahav in Yo. Philadelphia. Yes. Yep. Well, I didn't get to the Philly thing okay. yet. I, I know the New York <laughs> thing because we experienced it a week before we went to Israel. We went to eat there. It was the perfect pregame for <laughs> Israel. It's amazing. The food, the way they served it, the way he comes over and he's your best friend. And and they it, he told you, pace yourself. It's yeah. a lot of food. <laughs> pace yourself. It's they don't a lot do of that food. in Israel. They don't no, tell you to pace throw yourself. They don't tell you to yeah. pace yourself. They don't warn you. They tell you Those to hurry of you up. who who have been to Israel and how amazing the food is and like how you just sit in a restaurant and all of a sudden just salads appear and pita bread and hummus appears without you really having to think and take too much action. That's the vibe of this restaurant. Am I nailing it or no? You killed it. You yeah. do like restaurant PR on the side too, right? <laughs> I just reviewed an Achi bowl. Acai <laughs> e bowl. I was just my latest. <laughs> yeah, I listen, that means a lot to me. And the fact that you guys came and then went to Israel after, mm. and you still want to talk about this. It was wow. amazing. Wow. But I, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm um, such a huge fan. No, thank such you. Such a huge fan. Thank you. So we're we're huge here. fans of yours too. It's uh, the name of the restaurant, Laser Wolf. Do people always talk about that or no? They do. Well, some people are like, oh my God. And then some people are like, wow, laser beams, wolf heads. That's cool oh, too. Wow. But I don't know. Everybody, I think we all know, right? You know what it is. Lechaim, lechaim to life. Life has a way of confusing us, blessing and bruising us. Remix. Drink lechaim to life, to life. It's from, okay, so explain to the kids from what. From Fiddler on the Roof. It it's is. the name of the butcher. It's, it's the name of the butcher and yeah. Fiddler on the Roof. And you all know when you go to a shipudia or like a kebab place in Israel, there's a million skewers and kebabs and shish kebabs and all that laying out or like in a case. And we wanted to represent this butcher thing. And and actually my business partner, Steve and I had both separately uh, been actors in Laser Wolf. Uh, in like- Whoa, Laser no Wolf. Wow. I, he was, he, I was freaking tevia. Motala. Oh. He was fucking Tevia. Oh, you were Motala? Faster, I, yeah. So I was Tevia. Of course. I was Tevia. You know what? Everybody that play. was Tevia, they sound like they bring it up. Yep. My business partner Steve does the same thing. I was Tevia. You know, I was like, Tevia. I was my, my, it was the moment you could, I felt it on stage that this was a uh, it was the most insane thing to be Tevia on, on stage. You're like the it's it's like notorious BIG, basically, for Jews when you're Tevia. Basically. Yes, you are. Yes, you are definitely representing <laughs> Motala, on the other hand, is Nebuch. fucking skinny. I was like while I was Poor my thing. voice was changing. Right before Bar Mitzvah. That's perfect. And I had to be like, wonder of wonder, miracles of miracles. miracles. Yeah. Awful. God took a tailor by don't the hand. <laughs> no, you gave don't. him a life and miracles and miracles. God <laughs> has made a man today. I know what we're doing for the next 35 minutes. And I hate <laughs> musicals. I hate only yeah, Fiddler, Fiddler on the Roof. Fiddler is the on one I want. You know what I was talking to? Uh, first of all, do you know Dara Horn? She wrote uh, like... What is it? Um, people love dead Jews, or uh, she's amazing, amazing scholar. I'm not okay. actually getting the name right, but um, it is, uh, yeah, people love dead Jews. I believe is the name of it. She's an amazing scholar, Yiddish scholar, and was telling me about the actual story of Fiddler, which is like depressing as shit. It's right? the most horrible story because it was in the pale. I mean, it yeah. was like horrible. It was like pogromy. People were dying. Uh, she's fascinating, and you should actually have her on the show. But I was thinking. Since we're all upset, we all hate musicals, we're all obsessed with Fiddler on the Roof, why isn't there like a Rocky Horror Picture version of that? Oh my. Take over a restaurant, 
project it. Yeah. And then have people come up in a costume like us. Yep. You and Steve, obviously, will fucking battle for the Teddy. <laughs> I would, I will nobody's going to compete for Motelek because <laughs> that character sucks. But have everybody come up and do like Jewish, like Ashkenazi food and like sing. Like, wouldn't that be amazing? That would be so fun. That would be so fun. What did you smoke when you came up with that <laughs> idea? I don't know. How, I mean, how, how did you <laughs> wet when the dad? I mean, I'm not clean and sober 14 years. No. Maybe that's the thing. But I do feel like if you were invited to that Christmas Eve, I would you would there. fucking be there in a second. Not this year because not, not yeah, this year because I'll be at Sony Hall 24th, 25th, and 26th. Still as Tevia, and you're invited, right? Yeah. Basically Tevia. Basically. I'm still I'm Tevi, but just telling jokes. <laughs> am I am I just Tevi telling jokes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so, so Laser do. Wolf yeah. is an amazing. Thank you. How would you describe it? Uh, it's not, it's an Israeli restaurant. Yeah. Can you just say, like, this was the issue when we opened Zahab in 2008? I was like, I want to make Israeli food. At that time, if you wanted to be a fancy chef or get notoriety or whatever, you cooked European food, you mm -hmm. used tweezers, you like, you tweezers looked to. Tweezers is amazing. You look to like European chefs, right? And so we would do all that stuff. And the first chef's job I had, my business partner, Steve, hired me and um, to be a chef. And I'd worked at an Italian restaurant. I'd worked at a French restaurant before that. And then I just started to use things like hawaj, like the Yemenite soup spice, to braise like monkfish tails. Or I would take my grandmother's borekasto recipe and stuff like porcinis and foie gras in it. And so I started, wow. I was doing like quasi new European or American food, but with a lot of Israeli things. And, and we would use uh, circulators and sous vide and do all this molecular shit. Mm -hmm. And then I'd go back home and visit my family. I'd get off the airplane and we'd go to like, um, like a restaurant like Busi in Shonata Tikva. And you'd sit down and f fucking 20 salads would hit the table. The, the server would like run to the, the taboon next door. It's, th there are all these uh, grill restaurants on this one street in the Hatikva section in Tel Aviv, which was a shithole and now it's like <laughs> kind of gentrified. But, and there's one uh, lava like, like stall. So all the servers in, on that street run down and they pick lava up and run it back into the restaurant and they put it down and everything's cooked over charcoal, including like foie gras, which I, thought was like poached with cherry gastrique or yeah. whatever. But Israelis put goose liver on skewers and cook that shit over charcoal. And right. it's amazing. And I was like, why are we dancing around? Like, this is the food that we want to eat. And not only that, it's 20 different sal salatim that come from 20 different parts of the world yeah. that, that talk about yep. uh, diasporic cuisine, conflict, commonality between indigenous Palestinian cuisines, uh, spice road, silk road, like all this stuff. And I'm like, nobody is doing that shit. And the mm -hmm. Israeli chefs that were in the U.S. at that time, you know, they don't I don't think that people acknowledge that it was like Israeli cuisine because right. everybody came from somewhere else. Or if it was like Arab or Palestinian Oops, or sorry. whatever. So I just was like, I don't know what we're going to this is Israeli food. I want to be able to yes. celebrate those things. And I don't want to like dance around what might be problematic for people too. You right. know? And that's a whole separate Middle Eastern, yeah. Oriental. Well, the, like, Mediterranean, like Mediterranean. fuck that. Like, it's that's not, not it's Israeli it's food. It's not just Arabic either. It's not just Middle Eastern either. It's not certainly not just Jewish, but like those guidelines are helped. They're what helped actually sort of liberate this idea, which was that like, it's a hundred different gastronomies, basically all interacting in this one country that's like the size of New Jersey. Right. And yep. I wanted to be able to celebrate there that. There was an and so, article there, this yeah, week about yeah. in the New York Times. I'm it assuming literally that's what just you're came out. referring to. That, I know that. It, that the food that there is no Israeli food that the Israeli food is which is fucking bullshit stolen. No. Which is bullshit. That's it's what stolen. the piece it's was. Not, I mean, it's not stolen. It's. It's you. You it's can't say that. Well, it's just it's, an evolved food when the Ashkenazis came to Israel. When it, it, all things blended together. Listen, well, what, listen. It's what it is is a metaphor for saying that like Israel doesn't exist. That's right. right. But that's right. Listen, I'm not like in terms of my actual politics. I'm very left. I believe in Palestinian cuisine, Palestinian culture, all those things. But when mm. you just say Israeli food is stolen or doesn't exist, what you're saying is that Israel doesn't exist, and that all these things that I've talked about, all the 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 Fridays and Saturday meals that have depict that have basically given guidelines to Jewish food everywhere. Because in the diaspora, 
Yemenite cooking from Jews and, and non-Jews is very different, right? There's yes. kashrut, there's Friday and Saturday, which is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So all those different cuisines that have come back to Israel in the last hundred years don't exist anymore in their host countries. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's no fucking Jews left. That's right. That's Baghdad, exactly right. Baghdad was Everyone over loves 50 Jews, right? Every Baghdad was over 50% Jewish. There are zero there right now. And That's it wasn't a, a like, you know what? Let's move. No, it was the Farhud. There was people getting fucking murdered in the street. Yeah. And Yemen too, same thing. I mean, there's a huge Yemenite population. Yemeni Jews thought they were the purest Jews because they were so far away, right? Mm -hmm. And now, except for places in New York or LA or whatever, little communities all over the world, the only place that you can find actually Yemenite cooking is in Israel, right? And to say that that isn't a contribution, just like Palestinian food, in my opinion, is part of that. It's like you you can't just avoid those things. You can't just say all of it's stolen because that's what that is, yeah. is saying that the land is stolen and Jews don't belong there, right? Yeah. Right. And I would kind of like, in a way, I'd be like, could you just fucking start with that so we don't have to have <laughs> yeah, this back and, back forth. and forth? We live in the United States. What the fuck is American food? Yeah. I've worked in plenty of American restaurants here in the United States. It's Chinese Do you think food. any of them were owned by Native Americans ever? Zero. Mm -hmm. Chinese food as well, too. That's like a, I don't need to also, um, Wow, agree. are you passionate about food, huh? Well, I don't need to agree with the policies. Or is it passionate about, about the policy? The food, the food or the, what, what's driving this passion right now? Driving the passion is that I drink a shitload of coffee before okay, I got okay. here. Same. Number two, I just think that in this world of back and forth, there's no room for nuance, right? Mm -hmm. right. And I, listen, I don't know what it is like personally to be a Palestinian living uh in the West Bank or uh, Palestine or Judea, Samaria, whatever the fuck you want to call it, right? Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't know what that's like. And I can't imagine that it's fucking good. I don't know what it's like to be a Gazan. I do know what it's like to be Israeli. I do know what it's like to be Israeli American. And I also do know what it's like to, to be proud of where you're from and to be a little bit concerned when after all this time, people are starting to invalidate, continue to try to invalidate mm -hmm. your existence. So to say, like, I, fucking get it dude i mean i get it. there are people that like want independence there are people that want self-determination and they fucking deserve that shit but to say that the reason that they're trying to pass down generations of like grape leaves or whatever i didn't even read the article because i actually stopped subscribing to the times like a year ago but <laughs> but that pesky paywall but but to say that the reason that they're trying to pass it down is because Israelis like me are gonna steal it and take it away from them is just lazy. It yeah. just is stupid. Yeah, it's very it doesn't reductive. make sense. And then also, again, I'm gonna preface this by saying I believe in Palestinian self determination, but like, Grape leaves are rolled by fucking 30 <laughs> different kinds of people. And they were spread, it was probably spread by the Ottomans who conquered and ruled for like 600 years mm -hmm. before any independence in that region at all. Right. And it wasn't, again, it wasn't like, hey, we're going to share our ideas with it's the It's so funny. Leo, Leo brought me to a restaurant that it's on, on Grand Street that is uh, from the type of family he comes from in, in Spain. What's the name the of the type restaurant? of family? Dysfunctional. No, but... Uh, <laughs> no, but... <laughs> Nothing on that? From Spain. Spain. Wait, no, Spain. I was trying. It's a Galician restaurant. A Galician restaurant. Yeah. He's like, show me, oh, this is what they eat. <laughs> and it's every... It's a, it's this, just a different form of like, uh, the egg kugel thing. It was like, they had an egg kugel. Every yeah. culture has an egg, egg kugel. kugel. Yeah, they call it uh, they like call, frittata, right? It's tortilla. Or, it's tortilla. Or something uh, else. Tortilla yeah, yeah. yeah, I go, there's an egg kugel. It says, oh, my country's... Okay, we in my country, we call it a kugel. Yeah. It was the same, you know, it's all... Listen, anyway. it's Wait. like everything else. You Here we go. Well, what? I, wa I want, because uh, I saw this today and it was so funny because I you were coming on the show. Shakshuka is from Tunisia. Falafel is from Egypt. Zug is from Yemen. Shug, yeah. Shug. 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 Okay, Shug. Kube is from Iraq and Makbucha is from Morocco. After cooking these recipes for centuries, the Jews of all these countries were pillaged and banished. They fled to Israel with nothing but these recipes. So all of this food is now Israeli food. Well, it's the conversions. Which, it's that you can never look so at I'm one done. culture in one country and mm -hmm. say that is specifically this right. the Sabra right. that we all fight about, right? Palestinians and Israelis are Sabra, Sabra, where that's, that represents us. Why? Because we're prickly on the outside and sweet in the middle. Inside. That was brought in like 1850 to Israel. That shit didn't exist. That was probably from South America before that. There's nothing <laughs> original. The sumac, right? We all are like sumac, sumac, sumac. Do you guys know about sumac? No. Spice? 
What about you know it? What about you it? know what it is, right? I know what yeah, it is. yeah. Okay, so sumac was it's like a sour berry that's dried mm -hmm. that's used uh, to season food. You see it on uh, uh, the Palestinian dish uh, moussakan on top of chicken, but it's used like basically all over the Middle East. So that was the souring agent in food in the uh, Arabic sort of peninsula or in the Middle East before the Moors brought lemon 700 years ago, okay? Whoa. So that's what everything was soured with, right? Besides like fermentation. While that was happening in North America, Native Americans were also using sumac because you see it growing on the, you know when you're driving on the highway and there's mm -hmm. like a red conical bush with birds usually eating it? That's sumac, okay? okay? Okay. Native Americans made a beverage with that. Then, then the Pennsylvania Dutch stole to make fucking pink lemonade, okay? Wow. So everybody steals food, everybody transmits foods. Jews have had to migrate and they were frankly pushed around mm -hmm. and had laws of kashrut and had uh, Shabbat and different holidays where they needed to cook a certain way. And with them, they transmitted transported food, right? Yes. But like falafel was created in fourth century Egypt by the Coptic Christians so they could fucking eat vegetable patties during Lent, right? And I'm like, you can't, nobody owns that shit. And chutz mizeh, how are the Coptic Christians doing right now in modern Egypt? Not, not well. great. Not, not fucking great. well. You don't, you, don't, you don't hear from them often. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Not a lot of great representation yeah. with government or self determination or any of those okay. things. Okay. Did you grow up in Israel? No. So I was born <laughs> there. I grew up here in Squirrel Hill, Pittsburgh. Okay. Yeah. Which is like another little shtetl. Another shtetl. Beautiful place. And then we moved back to Israel when I was fifteen. Okay. I went to boarding school there, like an American boarding school in the north, and then, or, had an American program, and then I moved back to the states. Finished high school by myself, went to college, dropped out of college, moved back to Israel, and just got a job working at a bakery. And when did you know that you were obsessed with food? Like, how did that happen? So actually, the bakery, I wasn't like, I had, I was like a three-semester art major that spoke <laughs> shitty Hebrew, which doesn't get <laughs> you super far in the job market in no. Israel. So I lived, my parents were living in... Um, uh, Kfar Saba, or my mm. mom at the time. My parents had just divorced. My mom and my brother were living in Kfar Saba. I walked up and down with Hoboitzman asking people if they wanted like help or work or whatever, you know, if they needed work. And so I um, got a job working at a bakery, not because I wanted to be like a chef or a baker, but just because I like couldn't really do anything else. And that's, I was used to like selling weed and like doing nothing. And <laughs> then this was like And now you can working. sell weed in a bakery. <laughs> no, 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 dude. I mean, the weed at that time in Israel was fucking terrible, first of all. <laughs> horrible. Yeah, horrible. And then I had like run it, I like gone through a lot of like drug shit already mm -hmm. at that point. But I was just like, my life was falling apart. I wanted just like honest work. And working in a bakery is like so crazy real. hard work. But That's also so in Israel, first of all, every kind of person in Israel works in a bakery. Like every kind, like every immigrant, every, like I learned how to like insult people's mothers and like Arabic, Bulgarian, like all this, <laughs> everything. But then also the, everybody in Israel eats baked goods like three times a day, yeah, right? Nobody insane. gives it's a so shit good. about Atkins. And, and so, and <laughs> also even on, on Fridays, like secular or not, everybody kind of eats challah, right? right? And I was so used to being this shitbag, I took and I took and I took, right? My entire life. And this was like making challot for fucking strangers to be part of their, their Shabbat, Shabbat or, or whatever, or just being yeah. an honest worker. Like there was something really, it was something very generous. It was so mm -hmm. different than what. You I knew your challah was on a table somewhere. Ah, I knew my challah was on a table somewhere. Yeah. And I worked fucking 16 hours straight, making like nine shkalim an hour. Right, don't you wow. also have to wake up at like two in the morning to bake? You wake up bake? at two and then you go in on Friday, on right Thursday or Friday morning at 2 a.m. We would wake up and go in and yeah. just, work till like 5 p.m. or whatever. And wow. I loved it and it felt honest. And then I got a job as a short order cook basically up the street at a cafe called called the, the coffee tree. The you coffee know, which tree. Was <laughs> awesome. And I was like, um, it was like when there was like the uh, Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky scandal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they'd be like, hey, Michael, <laughs> you know Bill Clinton, huh? <laughs> Monica. And I'm like, no, I don't fucking know that. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, I was like, the, I was a foreign worker that was also a privileged American. Yeah, so right. I was like the token, like everybody loved having me there. Yeah, of course. You know, and uh I fell in love with cooking there. I, f I loved it. I loved so it. I learned how to speak Hebrew a little bit better. I learned how to like work really hard. And then I, I was like, wow, I'm actually 
good at this. Like I, this is creative. Like I think I was, I would have been probably diagnosed with like ADHD as a kid. Nobody mm -hmm. was really doing that back no, then. They're just you can still just tattoo or it. Or he's like you, you whatever. Kid's dumb. Yeah. So, and, but to, to then be able to apply yourself and like work with your hands yeah. and like shit would be on fire. There are people screaming in different languages and I You're like getting thrive. I love it. I yeah, love wow. it. And, and so I fell in love with it. And, um, Decided to go to culinary school in the States in Florida. And my family was like really excited that I wasn't like in jail or dead or whatever. And <laughs> so uh, how old were you when you started oh, you culinary that, you school? Were that out there? You were that like gone? I was like. Off the derrick? It's so it's, you know, is it cache las beer? But it's like, I, I feel like. For the kids uh, at home, that's heavy, heavy, heavy I did that American on accent. I did, that, I, did that, I did that on purpose too. <laughs> I'm, you know, but I, but I feel like the even uh, Leo can do a better Israeli accent. No, what only what did, what, did, what did you just say? He said, he said it's, it's hard, to, hard explain. to explain. Okay, it's it's beer. Like I, I can, I can sound a little bit more, you know, but you can, a little you can bit sucks, right? Yeah, so too. I feel like I, uh, you know, like addiction has always been something that I struggle. Okay, so now you are at the head of the. Okay, so there's a yeah. game in New York City. Where you cannot get a reservation. Yeah, this is what I want to talk this to you about. This is what we want to talk the to you about. The restaurant reservation Thank you for your culture. monologue. We love you. You're amazing. That was it. What is yeah. happening in New York? You cannot you, get a reservation you cannot. I don't know. to save I, your life. The only reason why we and were at Lingus World, like at the top of that. Mike's like, Which, I don't know. All, I can get a reservation no, no, anywhere. Okay. So you're at the top of <laughs> that you game. You can get a reservation. No, no, so get it. you're at the top yeah. of that game. First of all, are you enjoying it? Are you loving that you are such a hit? I you yes. cannot get into laser world. You me, cannot the get only reason why we were there was because I DM'd you and I was like, hey, do you think you could help us out here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> friends, we, posted, not, we posted we posted that we're there. Tell everybody. <laughs> we, we posted oh, everybody and they're like, what? How? Oh, wait, can't buy. Uh, it was amazing. We listen, You're at the top of that game. Are things. you enjoying it? I'm Are loving, you loving it? it. I love it. I we work very hard. Our team at Laser is phenomenal. It is very uh Flattering to be not only from Philly, from like the backwoods of Philadelphia, coming to New York and and uh, kind of achieving what we want, but to be able to do it with our partnership. We partnered with the Boca Restaurant Group, which is an amazing group out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So we have an amazing partnership with them, and that has been great. Like our team that we've built is, I'm, I'm so I'm honored to be able to work with them, but also to be able to bring an Israeli restaurant you know, from Israel to Philly to New York, I think right. yeah. also it's amazing. really magical. And to go up there, you get off the elevator and it feels like t t Tel Aviv on you, the beach, yeah. right? No, as soon as that yeah. Salat team plate shows yeah, up. Yeah, no, yeah. But the, also the tile was Israel. Tile, was serving and there's fucking Israel. charcoal. And, and like you're seeing the it, ocean yeah. and yeah, the yeah. charcoal and the weight staff. The ocean. The That's ocean. The East ocean? River. I'm like, what the hell is The East River. The East River was, the role of the Mediterranean would be played by the East River tonight. That was in the restaurant. But you have the view and it's like, not many big, big parties, so it's cute and yummy and warm. And yeah. uh, and the wait staff is one of those places where like one walks by, he'll pick up, she'll put down, they'll yeah, bring yeah. this. It's not one of those like this is your table and only your table. Right, right. No. They were right. so sweet, and they all came over. And um, I'm glad that listen, that means a lot to me, and I I feel like you have sort of experienced the magic, and that's what the hospitality. It's like it is. I don't know what it's, it's magic. Like. It's, it's magic, yeah. right? And and so, but it's also very honest food, and it's very simple, and it does explain or address if people are interested if you want to look at the history if you want to like understand the diaspora if you want to understand conflict and commonality in the region through food all those things are there too mm -hmm. or it's just, just a really good or just kind of good food you know yes no it, it's it's absolutely amazing do, do where do you that in, when we were in israel and the food was unbelievable because it was so fresh so fresh yeah. where do you how do you get where do you we just spent a lot of fucking money trying to get like really good stuff i mean that's the issue i was talking to my buddy alan the other day but like in israel the food is all <laughs> within 100 miles right. Yeah. Right, right right and like you can't reproduce that flavor it's also very healthy and they don't use um gmos, GMOs. over there either so yeah. uh and then there's different growing seasons right so if you get tomatoes that are from the south it's in brackish water so it's much sweeter and Wow. So it's that's a very hard thing. When you go to the shuk, <laughs> you're eating. You know, your brackish water tomato. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I've always is... said on the brackish tomatoes, <laughs> we have to cut back. Listen, listen, so, you guys know in the Negev, underneath the Negev is a giant aquifer, right? With, with salty brackish water that nobody thought they could use. Giant. Like, it, I think it's like the size of the desert. It's so much water. And under they started, the desert? Under yeah. the desert. And they started uh, experimenting and growing uh, tomatoes with it. And, the, and, you know, you measure sweetness in bricks. That's the metric. Okay. Coca-Cola is like eight bricks. They were using 
all this brackish water, 100% of the brackish water to grow tomatoes and achieving like 12 bricks. Like they were growing wow. tomatoes that were fucking sweeter than Coca-Cola. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Which I feel like would do very well in the United States. Of course. Right? Yeah. And but, fry them and yeah. fry them. Yeah. So so there is there is agriculture there that is indescribably good. No, we had Lucas tech, Lucas was like, when we came back from Israel, I had to Google, is American gluten different from Israeli gluten? Because how come I could eat so much bread there? So much, and he was fine. And you feel okay. So much yeah, pito and, fine. and, and oh, yeah. the it is actually, so much dough. Yeah, it's and the GMOs. Feel gross. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I mean, I think that has to be GMO related, but I also think that when you're walking a ton, Yes. Right. And when you're eating vegetables that have never been on the back of a truck for a week, that yeah. have not been sprayed, treated, yeah. you know, Died. sitting in a like whatever in like a warehouse in like chili for Ew, like two weeks. So those gross. things you just can't. It's just a very different thing. So that's been very challenging. Mm -hmm. And also we don't get like dank tomatoes nine months out of the year, especially in right. I mean, New York is a little bit easier. Philly is like. You know, we can't do salad katsuts. We can't do chopped salad uh, all the time. We have to use things that are local and use things like spices or mm -hmm. techniques to help imply what it is, right? Yeah. You can't just do, like, when we open Zahav, I would be like, I make great shakshuka. We're going to make shakshuka. And it would be like February in Pennsylvania. And making I'm making shush. shakshuka. And I'm like, all right, this doesn't work, right? Right. Because it's fucking seven degrees outside. <laughs> and we're not overlooking the Mediterranean like no. a Dr. Shakshuka or whatever, right? Yeah. So... You know, that idea of just copy pasting is something that we lost a very long time ago. Okay. Like we need to be able to take all the different cuisines, all the Libyan and the Yemenite and, the, and put it all together to make this food. That's that's what our, it's not an advantage. It's just what our like frame of reference is, you know? Okay, yeah. And the, um, I'm seeing on your arm, inside your arm. Yeah. Shema Israel. Yeah. Look at that. Shema Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Yeah. When did you get that? I got that. Uh, I got that after I got clean and sober, man. Wow. wow. Yeah, I got. I got like a uh, twelve-step sponsor, and he was Jewish, and I was like, and I was like, I don't know. A he's like, you need a mantra, you know. And I was like, I don't know what that fucking means. And he's like, you just gotta say some shit over and over again. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't. And he's like, bro, you went to Hebrew school. Just say the Shema. I was like, I can remember that. Yeah. But then, you know, you say it 20, 30, 40, 50 times a day. Things are going well. Things are going bad. You say the Shema over and over again, and you're like, oneness. Mm -hmm. Okay, oneness. I can do this. And then you say it at night, right? And then you, like, I don't know. So Three times a day. It's yeah, a day. I say Whatever. it definitely more than three times a day, yeah. but well, minimum is three times. And I say it at night with my kids. But so I ended up getting a tattooed, which is like super sacrilege. And when the yeah. 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 guys are going to wrap Tefillin on Friday, oh, hey, that? are you Jewish? Are you Jewish? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's see how committed you are, bro. No, they put it on. They don't care. No, no, I don't think anybody cares. And that's no. okay. Like, I'm, I'm. It's the one of the most important sentences. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the is Lord one. is one. Yeah. Not that there is one God, that one is God. So right. when you're all aligned in your yeah, restaurant, in you and the world, and making challahs to put in people's table, it's a oneness. You're aligned to oneness. Not there's one God judging all of us. It's. 100%. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, we are one. So Leo recently got a tattoo on the inside of his arm too. Let's yeah, see it. it doesn't say. Show us. Show us. Show us. It's so good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Get a Hebrew tattoo. I have a lot more of them too, but I've got the Shabbat meaning here too. And right? a lot of pineapples. Yeah. I'm catching a pineapple theme yeah, here. Yeah, totally. I didn't do that on purpose, but yeah, that's the. This is the symbol of hospitality. Is it? Yeah. It's all the also the symbol. Um, if you go on a cruise, that you're a swinger. I did not know that. If you, okay, so I didn't know I it did not know so that. I didn't know it either. So you've heard, right? No. So I no, wait a minute. If you hate a pineapple. Wait a minute. We, so this is how I found out. We're looking for a house, a, 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 a summer house or someplace. And we go to this place in Long Island and we get to the house and there's pineapples <laughs> everywhere. And there's this hot little uh, real estate agent who meets us tits everywhere just a hot little thing and she goes well the the owners of the house actually are actually there but they don't mind if you guys come and we get in there and there's another like a cute couple and the and they know they're very close with the real estate agent pineapples everywhere jacuzzi in the back boiling and going she and like she was like offering me a shot and was like do you want to get in the hot tub i was like no do you want to go <laughs> by the hot tub up? and then i, I walk out and they goes you saw the pineapples i go yeah they're like pineapples no modi that means they're swingers <laughs> wow they were i had that swingers. that was my lesson into it wasn't pineapples trying to get you drunk and in a hot tub either right? no yeah. no they wanted me in the hot tub and 
They were definitely swingers. Yes, a hundred percent. Once he told me, and when we got out, I go, everything oh made my sense. God. Somebody <laughs> told me that I recently moved to the suburb, like a, a year ago, moved to the suburbs, and somebody was like Adirondack chairs. Also, no the way. Side the What's that? Yeah. I, those like, the, those like wooden chairs, but those are everywhere. Well, yeah, there you go. There's not that much to do in the suburbs. Well, I just think it's funny <laughs> that there's these like signs, but you can see how all this would go terribly wrong, right? A hundred percent. You're like pineapples, like maybe you're just a pineapple dealer, or maybe you just like sitting in Adirondack chairs. <laughs> <laughs> people showing up like covered in Vaseline, just like ready. You know? Covered in Vaseline <laughs> and soup. Uh, yeah. What restaurant would you go to if you? If you were, had a night out in New York and you weren't going to go to your restaurant, what restaurant do you want to go to? Oh, God, New York is a hard play. There's so many fucking so restaurants. Many. So many. Or, huh? or Ernesto's. I love Ernesto's. I think that's a great restaurant. On the Lower East Side? Uh, yeah. By us. Yeah. That's on the corner from us. Have yeah. you guys been? It's no, all the, the lighting is amazing, but it's all trafe. It's, it's all trafe. I know. I <laughs> it's very trafe. Like, oh. Put a salmon, yeah, something. Another steak. You can have things. I'm not are... eating a steak from a non kosher restaurant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, they yeah. have nothing. There it's have a to, gorgeous there has restaurant. To be, there has to be not. I guarantee wow, there's not. Very trafe. <laughs> it is very, very trafe. Yeah, very but you trafe. can avoid What does that mean? If you, it's got like shellfish all over the place. Pork and all that. Yeah. Yeah, but so if the. So we don't. So in our restaurants, we don't do. Pork or shellfish, and right. we don't mix milk and meat. Right? So you're not trafey. We're not trafey, but we're not kosher. But we Hashtag don't mix milk and meat. Not we don't mix milk, you know. But when you go to a place like Ernesto's and you see like a ham, you're like, I can't. So this is right. kosher style, you'd say. You, or you'd kosher say style, definitely yeah. kosher style. Okay, so or I would go to uh, uh, Shuko, great sushi, right? Mm. Oh, I would go to okay. uh, Fun, like Little Prince. I love that, that place. That place is cute. Yeah. I feel like love we should it. be doing this off air so not everybody who's listening is going to now run to all these places. Oh, let well, them one run. To joy. <laughs> There's a new restaurant too. My buddy uh, Kobe and Adam just opened called Alba. You should definitely, definitely Where is go there. That? Where is Alba? Just... Alba? I think it's downtown, I think. I, I don't yes. Know. Dina was telling me about that. Yeah, go Kuchina there. Alba. Yeah. Right? Yes, oh, yeah. but you know, oh, like yes. 18th or 15th or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, he knows yeah. about that. Yeah. And uh, Kobe's a good friend, an amazing uh, restaurateur, and his chef, Adam, is one of the best cooks I know. Amazing oh. bread. And like, it probably can't get a reservation there. You can't. Well, you could probably do yeah. a little DM magic, you know? <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. It's me. <laughs> what up? Yeah. <laughs> Show up with a couple of pineapples in your <laughs> <laughs> bathing suit. You can do whatever you want. Uh -huh. yeah. I was told this was. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, this isn't that party. Oh, oh okay. Any hey. table for two, eight o'clock on Thursday. Truffles, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Truffles. yeah. Uh -huh. All righty. So uh, I, you're, you're you're loving the the success you're having. I'm grateful. I'm very grateful for. We're it. enjoying it too. Of course. I'm enjoying We're always it. Grateful too. Yeah. I, yeah. Of course. Listen, we have got. 23 restaurants plus leaves of Brooklyn. We're about to open Kfar downstairs. That's our cafe. Really? Kfar. Rish, Kfar. You know? Kfar. So we have one in, uh, we have one, it's named after, you know, it's like an ode to Kfar Saba right. or Mafiata Kfar, which was the first it's bakery. It's an ode to coffee in. tree. I just did it a is. show in Kfar Saba just so on really? the record. Yes, I was in Kfar Saba. I had a show booked in Ranana and the theater at 2 p.m got uh, shut down by the fire department because their sprinklers weren't right. And they moved the entire show one town over to Kfar Saba in a beautiful theater. And oh, it was done so seamlessly. Yeah. So I can when you say Kfar Saba, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. So I'm that's a it. theater that's almost like a contemporary, like it's in, it's on the main drag, right? The it's theater like you museum. went to or no? Yeah. Kfar Saba? It, the performance center. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's like, like a park in front of it. Beautiful park with Cord like yeah. ponds and all that. Yes. Right? So, so I, my family's apartment is like across the street from there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonderful place. Kfar Saba is a magical little place. So we opened this cafe and uh, sort of bakery or, I mean, we're going to have more than uh, just baked goods, obviously. But that's going to be opening that's in the ground need. floor of the Hoxton. That's wow. so Next amazing. Month, you guys are going to come to the opening. Yes. Oh, I mean, that's, Yo. I'll DM you. My <laughs> soil, one, oneness, oneness. This is oneness. You are schnitzel? Are you going to, would you have you would schnitzel out or no chicken out? I, I depends. You got to feel the vibe. But yeah, probably not. I'm more fish and salads and that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. If you're going to, you know, we can do this off air too. No. <laughs> I, 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 fucking Modi had chicken out. Yeah. No, yeah. no. Do they, do, do we get any DMs that I eat in places that aren't kosher? Um, 
remember when you posted that video with Elon Gold where you were at the restaurant passing the check back and forth? Yeah, yeah. Someone was like, I'm trying to zoom in to see where they are to see if it's kosher. And all oh, that. So oh my oh. God. Yentes. Uh, yentes. Yentes. Yeah, yeah. yentes. Wait, wait. All right, all right. All right, all right. Um, yeah, but okay. we'll have plenty of, plenty of dairy as well. And we mm. use my grandmother's Boreca store recipe. Wow. wow. Where, are your, where are your grandparents from? So my my... Uh, paternal grandparents were from Bulgaria, from Varna, so they're all Sephardic. Mm -hmm. And uh, my maternal grandparents were all like Russian, Lithuanian, but were, you know, grew up in like Ohio, you know, had like the grocery store. Right, right. My grandfather uh, was a pediatrician, but basically like bootlegged whiskey from Canada to West Virginia to oh, pay for like amazing. medical school. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. pretty badass. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I, I love those little towns like Ohio. In the, it's like a gullus. You're in the middle of the mm -hmm. really out there in the diaspora, but there's like two stores that sell kosher stuff, and and there's a synagogue it, that's like very inclusive. What know? about very, Chicago? Yeah. What are like some of the restaurants that love you like Chicago. in Chicago? Because I feel like whenever we're there, we don't do well. No, the, we do oh not do gosh, well. Chicago is an amazing restaurant town. It, yeah, is it? Oh my gosh, yeah. Our partner is at a Boca Group. Uh, oh, we actually stayed at the Huxton. We yeah. stayed at the Huxton. The girl, the girl on the goat, which is there. Yeah. Too. That. Uh, oh, actually, wait. No, the Cabra. That's there. That's on the roof deck. Girl on the goat is there. They have that whole like West Loop. Yes, know, yes. A lot of that's where we stayed. Yeah. Yeah. You let me know. Chicago is an amazing. But we ate in that restaurant that downstairs. Yeah, at Huxton. It's so so Chicago. good. Yeah. Okay. Black, is it Blackbird is also really really good. Mm -hmm. um, where else? Alavita, amazing. I don't know. Chicago's awesome. Oh. Okay, I, so we we used to. I guess in the early days of this podcast, I used to ask, "Who's your rabbi?" Oh, have oh. we been skipping that? We've been skipping. Oh my that. god, we, I, I thought we stopped on rabbi purpose. Eli. No, we we always ask everybody, "Who's your who, who's your rabbi? Who's your like not just to be rabbi, rabbi? My, your guru? Your who would you go does, to? Who doesn't would, have to be a, a religious. Doesn't have to be rabbi. Oh. Doesn't be religious. Just to be like, who's your rabbi? Be a who's your culinary rabbi? Could be a tattoo rabbi. Different rabbis. Probably not a lot of tattoo rabbis. You know, Let's <laughs> the be tattooed real. rabbi. Yep. I, I mean, my actual rabbi is incredible, uh, Rabbi Eli. Uh, where? From Rota Shalom in Philly. Oh. He's amazing. Really, really. Are you friends with him awesome. too? Very good friends with him. He's a really. Isn't it fun to be friends with your rabbi? He and his wife, Laurel, are like incredible people. And the whole congregation is actually awesome. I really love it. Whoa. And it's right on Broad Street. And it's a beautiful building. And, and I, I really, I like it a lot. And the older I get, I know it's like obvious, right? The older I get. I grew up conservative Jewish, but I think it was only because like my mom wanted like Hebrew, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I'm like, I'm a very reformed Jew now. And, and I, but I really love, I love the shul. So I would say he is pretty cool, but I don't know who else. There honestly. If you had a, a, a question to ask about, should I go into business with these partners? Should I, da, 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 should I, mean, I my, so continue my, making my this business type of partner, food? My yeah. business partner, Steve, is like my best friend, but also my mentor in business, but also, my brother, but all, you know, like all these things. Right. So like he would be the most obvious. So Ironically, yeah. his father and brother and grandfather were also rabbis and his sister is, uh, is the uh, principal of like a, like a Jewish so, we'll get, so he's the rabbi. He's a rabbi. That's who it is. But I you know, your question. success is all, it's like, it's, it's the people that you have in your life. Yeah. Right, you're you're surrounded by rabbis. You're surrounded by people that are there. Tell to me about it. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you have to be a rabbi once in a while, also. I got to be a rabbi sometimes as well. You and now are uh, people. Uh, you're an inspiration to me. That's why I opened this restaurant. That's why I went to cooking. I ate at your place. You're that now. Uh, you know, I'm happy to. I am proud to be a conduit between the the our guests and our community and the values and the things that I really love about Israel. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to We do did it. watch you go around to almost every single table every and table. make everyone feel made very special. Everybody feel loved and the, the, they were very the focus special, of the right? restaurant. Listen, I appreciate that, but like that, that we like that was what I do for my life, right? It's to give people memories. Mm -hmm. It's a fucked up world we live in, man. It's stressful. It's There's insane. all this crazy shit happening. What we need, we own a bunch of donut shops too in Philly. We have a homeless place, we have a falafel place. It could be a five minute interaction or two minute interaction, or it could be like two hours at Laser Wolf, or two and a mm. half hours at Zahav, or whatever it is, for that time, I want people to feel special. It's what I, it's the same, same, same. It is, it's like the same. It's the same yeah. for one hour. They don't have to worry about every problem they have with their family, right. any disease or aches they have. For one hour, Politics, they anything. are yeah. in, a, in a zone of laughing. For one hour, we were 
in Israel, being loved by everybody in the restaurant, right. enjoying food that reminded us of amazing times and summers and, and just yeah. and nostalgia. Yeah. It was, that's what it was. I was talking to my friend Alex Edelman about you actually too. And we were, we talk, we like go back and forth uh, cause there's so many similarities too. And it's like, your job is to make people feel good. Yes. You have one hour to do it. One hour to connect with everybody out there, like in your, whatever your, uh, what do you call it? Audience. Well, your audience, but what's the sort of horizon that you, don't you, you pick out like one row of people usually when you start or no? Me? Yeah. N no. Mori doesn't have the attention. I don't have, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I love my audience. I don't care where you're from or what you do. I, I'm not that comic. Hey, where are you from? What do you do? Mm -hmm. I, I have these jokes. I want to see if they work and make, and make you laugh. I love them all, but I don't really pick out anybody. No. Goyim. I pick out the non-Jews. I wait. always have fun with yeah, them. Yeah. Last night, and Modi did two shows in Scarsdale, and the, I was sitting in the back, and the woman next to me was silent, crying, laughing, it's so bent good. over. It's so good. I didn't hear her, and then I noticed that she was, I thought she was like kind of slouched over, but she was actually just doubled over, That's laughing so, so hard for like was, 25 it was, minutes. It was this room. Uh, it was the size of this room. The size of this room. It was a small room. It, they packed it in 56 seats in Scarsdale, yeah. which is Scarsdale, New Rochelle, all those little yeah. dales with money. Little and they don't dales. want to drive into the city. So my friend, Joe Manneries, put this comedy club together and it's 56 people. We were on top of each other. Like, there was no one to, nice They though. kept their coats on because there was nowhere to put the coat. Oh it God. was that tight. I know. And I went on and we were doing, all, and there was, there was just one row of women who bought tickets who were not Jewish. And th they were in these like, Modi fan base, super Jewish audience. And then I did the, I literally did the whole show to them. Mm. And it was just kind of, but otherwise I don't usually talk to, to anybody yeah. specifically. But when there's Gentiles and non-Jews in the audience, I, I always bring them into the So fold. did you get them, was there a moment where you got them to like crack? They were dying. They, they were cracked from, from the hello, hello. <laughs> So what are I you said doing that, Hello, here? <laughs> this is gonna be the longest night of your life. The rest of the show is in Yiddish. Uh, That's what I said to them, uh, and they were dying uh, laughing. You know, I like so I recently. I mean, I've always liked comedy or whatever, but I don't go out that much. I, at night, I work in restaurants, and mm -hmm. or I'm like at home eating cereal, like in my underwear, you know, in front of my <laughs> same, TV. Same, but um, same. <laughs> what's your cereal? Uh, cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh, wow. Anything Leo brings to the house. <laughs> uh, you gotta be kidding me. Well, I, I, I life kick, you know. Whatever he brings in there, and yeah. if it tastes like death, I just put a sativa in it, and it becomes <laughs> yummy. He'll he'll go through these health phases of like there's nothing healthy about cereal. Bird, 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 bird food he brings in with the oh, but sometimes you we, and then once in a while, let me tell you something. If I buy it myself, raisin bran. Wow, yeah. really? I mean, believe wow. me, no one really knows. But raisin bran with <laughs> what's your sativa cereal? in it? What's I, yours? Sativa. Uh, raisin bran is like interesting. I feel like that's like I move into I've. I bought a place in Boca Raton and I'm like, you know. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> uh, no. No, mine is uh, Cinnamon Life. <gasps> really? You know? yeah. Wow. Have you fucked with Cinnamon Life recently or no? Recently, no. I, I would not fucked with Cinnamon it. Life, but I love Life cereal. Life. It's cinnamon so Life soft. is excellent. Yeah, it's really like, good. Hey, First Mikey, he likes it? That yeah. much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. But with Cinnamon, it's very mm. good, yeah. Is nobody going to address how awful it is to put stevia in cereal. What do you put stevia in everything? Like that I, is. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. What's it's wrong like you're with you? It's like you by the good people at stevia. I, I, I don't even know what stevia is. Yeah. I know it's not sweet and low and it's not sugar. Yeah. It's somewhere not horrible and not great. I milk based yogurt. That's uh, disgusting. Delicious. It was so good. And I no. was like, Modi, this is good. And he goes, it needs a stevia. Yeah. <laughs> stevia. Like, a stevia. I would definitely, if for that, I would add a stevia. Yeah. yeah. It, it was, was sweet already. No, right. no, no. Sorry. Um, okay, so wait. Oh, yeah. So, 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 so here's the deal. So I don't go out very much. But my friend Alex took me to one of his shows. He was eating in a restaurant. And I was like, he was like, hey, I got to go do this. Uh, one of my friends is, I, wants me to open up for him. Right? And I don't get to see behind the scenes. Like the way that you all work is fucking brilliant right uh -huh. and i when people come in to visit me in the kitchen they're like oh my god this is like crazy all the stuff is happening and you're like yeah it's wonderful like i'm gonna you know play around with like a little veal this and that or whatever mm -hmm. right and then you go to the table and it's all magic right but when you watch somebody that is so good at being like an entertainer and their ability to make people comfortable or to make people uncomfortable and to do it 
with seconds is like, it is incredible to watch. So Alex is eating in my restaurant. He's like, between entree and dessert, he's like, I'm gonna go to the um, to Helium, which is our comedy place in Philly. Can you give me a ride? And I'm like, all right, sure. I drive, I actually find parking. He's <laughs> like, do you wanna just come in? I'm, I'm just gonna be like, five minutes or whatever. And I'm like, all right. So I go in there. I thought he was like delivering like a package. <laughs> and then he walks off, he's in the green room yeah. and I'm just standing there. And they're like, oh yeah, you ready? And he's right. like, sure, come on up. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? Like, don't you have to like rehearse? And so he's just working on jokes, but there's a guy in the front that looks like he is being choked. And he's got this, and 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 I, you know, it wasn't like Alex's thing, so it wasn't like only Jewish or whatever. But right. it was this guy with this, this big like red beard. He looked like a Viking, and he had his fucking hands. He was doing this, like walking back and forth, <laughs> right. crying. That's what this woman was crying. doing next to me. And I was like, oh my god. And I, I mean, the jokes were awesome, but. I was watching this guy reaction and I'm like, what a beautiful thing yeah. to experience. Yeah. I love that. You know, and I just feel like that shit right now, given everything happening in the fucking world, like we need that shit. No, when You're you go, when you treasure. look at, when you look at a national, a national treasure, uh, when you look in the audience and you see someone losing it, uh, I have two clips. Uh, one we did it. I was at the Comedy Cellar, and there was this girl. It's about dating and Jewish, and this girl lost it and couldn't pull it back together. <laughs> 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 and Leo got it. We actually posted it on my Instagram, and then we were in Israel, where one woman just lost it and that, to the point where I had to stop and go, "Go ahead." She was so loud. She was like, "She was, she was like, yeah. it, it, was just, it was so funny. So good. And yeah, uh, yeah. It's a somatic release." Yeah. It's, it's how much time? I don't want to keep you. Uh, uh, We're good. We're good. Okay, go. So but you know what is even almost more fun than that? What? Is watching him crack up. Yes. That's so much fun. It's, to watch somebody say something that makes you laugh is so much like, fun. Like you mean in the sort of private worlds or on stage? Both, but mostly in the private world because I feel like we're around comics all the time yeah, like right. we're always yeah. around people we who are so sharp right. and so funny and but that's also a misconception when you, that, like, when you go to a restaurant on. and taste something i taste it that's delicious right, let's move right. on you're what's happening in your head that's right how did they get yeah. this where so, he's getting his tomatoes are there salty tomatoes <laughs> <Brackish>. <laughs> when someone when someone says a joke to me i'm so i'm so in a different place of listening to it but once in a while, leo kills me once in a while i'll just hit a line in yiddish out of nowhere that's amazing. and i just start laughing it's just terrible that's amazing and uh welcome to anatepka exactly yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah but when you when that happens are you like my work on this for this day is done right no because no. then he's got to deal with all the jewish people <laughs> in the shows yeah. no but when you, the magic you do in your restaurant there's people behind you there's your partners the managers that yeah. where you can just show up and be you and do what you do yeah. and you know i podcast producer a producer yeah, yeah. everything and so without that you have nothing yeah that's the more important than 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 you know it's it's a combination it's echad it's, it Israel. it's one it's oneness it has to be a team i mean that's the way that things get done but i think it's interesting like i when when i'm eating in a restaurant and i'm being non-critical i can eat like whatever people are like i'm scared that you're gonna come over and eat dinner i'm like i yeah. again i eat cereal in my underwear most yeah. of the time or peanut butter jelly sandwiches over the sink <laughs> i don't care <laughs> But <laughs> for you, are people like, oh, hey, I got one. Always. My dad, oh, oh, my God. I can't even fucking bring my oh dad around. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't tell my dad that I ever met you or hung out because he would be like, okay, okay, but I got one. <laughs> you know, he'd call you seven hour fucking time difference. What's up? Wait, can no, I read, yeah, can I, I read I a text? Yeah. No, no, a, this is amazing. Oh, Leo reading. just sent this to me. I he was just, enraged. I just sent this to Periel <laughs> because someone texted me. This is a person who I've met maybe twice. And hey, I'm thinking of oh. a funny routine for one of Modi's upcoming shows. <laughs> you know when you text someone and autocorrect sometimes changes your words and you don't realize until it's too late? <laughs> my friend recently texted her single friend who was sick and my friend meant to write, I can't believe you're still sick. But autocorrect changed it to, I can't believe you're still single. It went through that way and she was mortified. <laughs> I'm sure Modi could do a whole routine on this. What do you think? Oh, uh, uh. I mean, Listen, she got to laugh at the, she got to laugh, she got to laugh on this. It's very, very funny, but you're also <laughs> no, like, but yeah. the rhetorical, like, what do you think? You're like, yeah, you know yeah. what? Let's have a conversation. You know, that's that's what what I'm not saying. Let's have a conversation. Have Modi's attention span for more than five minutes, I'm no, pitching him But I joke. will tell you when someone like your father, I can tell when they come over, I have a joke for you. I, I know exactly if they're going to give me something. Oh, the, where did she have cancer? In Brooklyn. Oh, I, 
I have a million jokes that people <laughs> literally just give it to me. Yeah. Some, I, I have this routine about in the Shiva uh, when people ask the stupidest questions like, How'd you know, she die? How'd, How'd she be die? Good doctor? And so this guy, so I, I'm doing the bit and the room is dying laughter. It was a Hasidic audience, <laughs> all Hasidic. It was a private thing just for this Hasidic guys on a boat. It was crazy. But I'm doing the bit and, and it, it's, and this guy, everybody's laughing, and this guy all of a sudden stops laughing, and I could see him like this. So I didn't know. The show is over. He comes over. I have, I have to tell you a line. I have for you, I have for you something to add to your routine. I have for you something. But people ask the questions are so bad. They ask a question like this. They said, where did she have cancer? I said, in Brooklyn. <laughs> And it was worth, it was, it's a bit, it's in my act now. It's so good. It's in my, and then I added, what are you filling out a corner report? And he's like, you know, it's um, people, no, I never say no when someone says I have a joke for you. But also the, like the Jewish inflection where it's like, they get serious and they have to tell you something. And you're like, yes. I was just doing a comedy show for like an hour. And your mood changed immediately because it was so important for you to he, tell me yes. this joke. Right, 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 right. He right, said, right. Like he was I angry have to remember to tell this him. Is like, uh, no, he yeah. just went into the fact that he, this is he, this is his mission now. The rest of the joke, no, he has a, a line for me, and he did. He nailed it. Yeah, People, that is really good. But old guys, yeah, Florida, can I offer you a joke? Oh my and then gosh. boom, they give it to you. We get that all my 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 aunt who does live in Boca when. Ever she and her friends are complimenting me on food, yeah. they'll be like, I want to tell you something. And she starts fucking, they start uh, like hurting me. It was so good. And I'm like, I can't tell what you're telling me. <laughs> Did you actually like it? Or are you trying to like mug me right now? But um, yeah, my dad would, my dad will straight up call me at whatever hour from Israel and be like, Michael. And I'm like, Abba, I can't do this right now. I'm in the middle of like whatever. And he's like, I've just got one joke for you. Maybe tell it to your staff. And I'm like, I cannot tell it to my staff. He also uh, doesn't wait, realize. Can we have him on the podcast? No, I absolutely. cannot. <laughs> can we can. FaceTime, WhatsApp him He's right so, now? <laughs> no, it would be, that would be the best moment of his life, actually, if we did that. But it is like the funniest thing. And he also, we moved to Israel in the mid 90s when like political correctness had just started to become relevant in the mm -hmm. workplace. So like the shit that he brings from back then is hilarious, yeah. but like nothing I could ever remember. I had an uncle like this. So I had an uncle, my uncle Eud, and when I started doing, he's a, he's a table comic. This yeah. guy could hold Tish. He could really like, <laughs> he could really, he was a big guy and was hysterical and could tell a story. When he found out his nephew's doing comedy, and at the same time, I was working at Merrill Lynch. Oh. So he would call up the office. I'd be there. I'm like, hello, Merrill Lynch. He goes, Modi. I, I go, are you busy? I go, very. He goes, okay, good. So here's the joke. And he would just tell. And I still use like I still use those jokes. Really? Yeah, the one with um, the one with uh, a, um, a couple of things at a fancy restaurant. <laughs> he just over, goes right into over it. to he the table go. comes this Ooh. beautiful woman. She kisses the husband on the forehead. Stanley, I'll see you Thursday. Walks away. The wife says, Stanley, who the hell is this? Because that's my mistress. Your mistress? That's it. I want a divorce. I said to her, no problem. But if we get a divorce, there's no house in the Hamptons. There's no house in Palm Beach. There's no apartment in, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in California. And then while he's explaining to her what life would be like when they get divorced, their friend Marvin walks in with a beautiful redhead on his arm. And she says, who the hell is Marvin with? That's his mistress. She goes, Oz is better. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me that joke and then hung up. He didn't like, do you like it? You can use it. He told me the joke and yeah. hung up. It's like no, deposited. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Like, that's it. Go back to whatever <laughs> you were doing. But just like when you say, I eat peanut butter and jellies over the sink and, and cereal in my underwear. It's like when I have to get you to log into a Zoom call and they go, oh, we thought you'd be funnier. Like in oh, the, on business calls. That's I'm a like, new thing that's I'm been like, happening. I'm like, what? This is that's not a new thing that's been happening. Yeah. Not good. Not well, going. You're not know, constantly yeah, yeah. in your kitchen making right. sous vides wow. and, um, and you're like, I don't well, that's also the other thing too. People are probably like, Oh, I see you on the street, and you're like, I just, you know, left the doctor or I just <laughs> fucking had to go to the No, bank. I always give it right. to them. Always give yeah. it to them. It may, it's when you when someone comes over to you, hey, it's 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 you just recheck that you're it's I do the same thing, you just but it is always also, give but them it's the unreasonable love. for people to think that you're like ready to go all the time. I but, get this, I get people saying to me, Oh, you're the comedian. T tell me a joke. Yeah, right. Tell me tell a me joke. A joke. Exactly. I'm like, 
am, you're a gynecologist. Like, am yeah. I asking you for like an examination? It's like, it's, uh, when they say to you on these Zoom calls now, before the event, we want to do a Zoom more just so he knows what oh, the organization thought, is about. Sorry, I was gonna, I was thinking, when you're at the gyno. They're like, <laughs> tell me a joke. And you're like, right from this position? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, no, so people, look, you've been on, on the Zoom for five minutes, you haven't been funny yet. Uh, really? Well, I think Zoom comedy, I can't imagine how shitty that it was. Would be. The you can't hear it was the worst. It was traumatizing. No, I, so I used to set it up. I was, I became a professional at Zoom comedy. I used to set it up in a way where I had actual people, they were watching, laughing, and they knew they had a laugh, and it was, yeah. I don't ever want to do that again. That's got to be really tricky. It was the worst. I do think it's one of the only things comedy is that like people like want you to perform no matter where you are. No. Right? no They're not like, not cook just, me a meal. They're like, anything. hi, nice to meet you. It's anything. It's it's a do my friend Stephen. Yeah, maybe. Stephen's gonna be on the right, set. Right. He's a Jewish doctor. People, Jew yeah. As soon as that, you, oh, you're a doctor. You're right. You're I'm right. Sure. Yeah, I just yeah, went yeah, from yeah. twenty milligrams to forty. What do you you're think? You're right. You're yeah. absolutely Every right. It's horrifying. Every, it's horrifying. What? It's horrifying. It is. It, people I'm have actually no feeling filter. bad now. I asked my friend who's a dermatologist to look at something on That's my back recently. As soon as someone sees a dermatologist, <laughs> yes, yes. What are you showing me? You're rash. Literally, we left a dinner party where there's a dermatologist, and when we left you go i'm surprised you didn't show her that thing <laughs> <laughs> you said that to me. leo had on his back this this big and there was this like top it was New just York a zit city. it went away it went away but i was like it was getting like it was right before going to Israel. oh there's gonna be a big fat infection on his back but yeah. and we were at this and we were at kim it's krishna's now, uh like. house for for shabbat and this is dermatologist from the top of the line dermatologist and other she looked at her, he's like, <laughs> I'm like, yes, let me get her up from the Shabbat table and pull her into the bathroom and take my shirt off. Although, yeah. although we will say Jody Levine and Ellie Levine in their house in Atlantic Beach built a whole office downstairs. Like examination room. Examination like, room where they can do sutures and everything. For what? What are they? What kind for of- For that moment, right? For that moment yeah. when, the, when the neighbor says, my kid fell and cut his, his, his chin, can you sew it up? Yeah. So he, they're like, they're, they're that they like, used uh, to they it. Like they're that food, used right? to it. <laughs> they're amazing. <laughs> no. Oh my God, get them a reservation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, get them a reservation yeah, yeah, yeah. and she'll Botox your forehead off. Um, okay, on that note. Uh, Where can I, they find you? Yeah, and to, uh, Laser Wolf, obviously. Yeah, so you got to come to Laser Wolf Brooklyn. We're going to be opening Kfar uh, in the next month or so, like so in November. And or catch, catch me in uh, Philly. I'm usually at Zav restaurant standing in front of the wood burning oven. All right. All right. That's yeah. where I'm going to find you online. Absolutely. Philly. We will. Oh, uh, at Mike Solomonov. And, and your cookbook is? Uh, we have a cookbook called Zahav. We have a cookbook called Israeli Soul, mm -hmm. and we have a Federal Donuts cookbook. And we're working on a fourth right now. Wow! wow. wow. I'm, gonna, I'm coming to Philly. Yeah, we'll come do Philly. To, you guys I'm going to come to Philly. Philly. We okay. will. We have things that are not far. Yeah, even that Uncle Vinny we're thing not is not far. that far. I mean, New York. I don't know anything. I mean, it's an hour and forty-five minutes away from here. So come down. It's a trip. It's, it's not. It's like it's bed to Union Square in traffic. Okay. Okay. We'll come. I'm at ModiLive.com, and I have. Uh, uh, we we so we added a show for Christmas for the holidays show have been extended from the 24th of December to the 25th and now we added the 26th. There's tickets still available for that one. Uh, LA sold out. Miami sold out. Um, uh, what else? Um, your Mohegan Sun run. We Mohegan have a show Sun. at Mohegan Sun. The link is Come live. See the and here's Moda crew at Mohegan exactly. Sun. Exactly. We'll December all be there. 1st. Second, uh, and third. Will, will you be doing time on stage? I might get a hot five together, guys. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, <laughs> I should. <laughs> um, at ModiLive.com and... I'm hosting an opening, yeah? For that Mohegan Sun For that gig. show. And December I'm, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. It's on ModiLive.com. Get the tickets. And I'm at Periel Ashenbrand on Instagram. We love you. For anything from this episode, Shema Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, Oneness, Unity. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you all so much Thank for having you. me. Thank you. Ciao. Gorgeous. Yeah.